in a village in far southwest China, after a nightcap of opium, old Mrs. Jia beds down. In a community of just 300, she's one of 46 people addicted to opium or heroin. I've been taking it for 50 years, she says. I'm sick and it kills the pain. She keeps it in a small tin in her underwear. Mrs. Jia's son is a heroin addict. 20 of their neighbours are infected with HIV, mostly from sharing needles. Three people have died of AIDS. This is a part of the 4,000 kilometre borderline that China's Yunnan province shares with Burma, Vietnam and Laos. Since China opened up these frontiers in the 1980s, the border trade has flourished and Yunnan province has found itself at the heart of one of the most lucrative narcotics routes in the world. <laughs> the trail starts here at Jiegao on the Burma border. This old Chinese shantytown has sprung up into a thriving special economic zone. Half of all Yunnan's border trade now passes along this dusty track. Mr. Wang is in charge of the border trade. But the Burmese merchants that ply this lucrative trade route bring more than just pumpkins. Every year, tons of narcotics make the journey too. The town's tiny customs post hasn't a chance of controlling what's coming in. In fact, China's leaders blame the active involvement of some authorities for the growth in the smuggling trade. The drug trail follows Route 302 from the border to China's eastern seaboard, a road that's now thought to carry a large part of the heroin flowing from Asia to the west. Yunnan was once a rural backwater, home to one-third of China's ethnic minorities. Now this peaceful province has found itself in the middle of a war over drugs. As Route 302 winds its way inland, police search vehicles coming from the border for drugs and firearms. The fight against narcotics has been declared a major national priority. The penalties for trafficking are severe. Anyone found with more than 50 grams of drugs is executed. But narcotics control here has holes you can drive a truck through. 2,000 vehicles pass through this police checkpoint every day. The police say they check only one or two hundred of them. The rest drive straight through and on to Yunnan's provincial capital, Kunming. For the majority of China's drug users, this is where the narcotics trail ends. Is China's wild southwest, 
a town well out of reach of the long arm of the law administered 2,000 kilometres away in Beijing. Among the youth of this thriving frontier town, drug use has become part of the way of life. For the local Communist Party leadership, it's a source of national shame. Dupin,生物通觉。对于制止,打击贩卖毒品,态度是坚决的。但是又要承认,它是一个高额利润的趋势。Local experts say there are now up to 70,000 narcotics addicts in Yunnan. In some parts, there's an addict in every second family. They hang out in the streets and in the parks. They have nothing to do and nowhere to go. If they're caught, they're arrested and jailed. Xia Wu has been on heroin for four years. He started out smoking, but like many here, recently started injecting because it's cheaper and gives a stronger hit. But there's no sympathy for drug addicts here. Drug abuse here is viewed not as an illness, but as a crime. And it's the police who administer the cure. The penalty for drug use is a mandatory three to six months forced detoxification in a drug treatment centre run by the police. The detox centre outside Kunming, run by the Public Security Bureau, has treated 10,000 addicts since it was set up three and a half years ago. Foreign journalists aren't allowed in, but police videotape faithfully documents the traumas inside. Drug addicts like Xia Wu shudder at the memory of the government's compulsory detox centres. <laughs> This shabby clinic in the back streets provides the best treatment that drug addicts can get in Yunnan. Dr. Li Jianhua runs a pioneering methadone program and rehabilitation course for patients like Mr. Wu. Dr. Li says the government system of detox alone, without rehabilitation, simply doesn't work. He says drastic measures are needed to cope with the epidemic of drug use and a looming epidemic of AIDS. Haloin 那么现在呢，就贩卖海洛因的比较多。那么因为这个转变，就现在呢，在这个呃吸食鸦片的人呢，就啊比那个时候呢就开始在下降，哎，吸食海洛因呢就啊开始上升。As intravenous drug use has so
Yunnan has become the HIV capital of China, with 80% of the HIV cases in the whole country. A huge sex industry has brought sexually transmitted disease in epidemic proportions. Dozens of private clinics line the streets, advertising the gory symptoms and offering traditional herbal cures for venereal disease. At the Kunming Anti-Epidemic Centre, a small team led by Dr Chen Hehe tries to come to terms with the rapid spread of HIV. 那么在德洪州那一些的静脉吸毒者当中呢，它共用针具呢，几乎是百分之一百。嗯，在九九零年九到九二年，它是可以高达百分之八十在静脉吸毒人群当中。I understand that in some villages, almost every family has somebody using narcotics. 虽然不能说每家人家都有人吸毒，可以说是有很多的年轻的男性都在吸毒。how big a threat do you think that AIDS poses for China? That中国其他的地方也有这样一些危险行为,也有这样一些危险人,就是有高危行为的人群,像这种呢,只要一旦传入呢,那么就很快的传播开来,所以我觉得中国也是面临这样一个危险。The authorities say they're winning the war against drugs, but at night on the streets of Kunming you hear a different story. How common is narcotics use? 这些，因为为什么有百分之八十呢？因为就在我认识的朋友。The drug trade has spawned rampant prostitution and a nightlife that revolves around drugs and sex. They might like to call it socialism with Chinese characteristics, but this is capitalism in the raw, and the same old rules of supply and demand apply. 那么这小街上呢有很多这个美容品，呃，那么他们在那呢，就是，呃，呃，表面上呢是给人做一些这个呃美容的这个工作，但是实际在暗地里边呢，就做一些这个呃色情服务。Dancing halls like this one, trading models titillate the audience, and then escorts employed by the bar solicit clients for dancing or sex. While China's leaders hail their economic revolution, it's left to people like Dr. Li to try to stitch back together the unraveling social fabric of Yunnan. 对一些这个处于一些比较贫穷地区的这些人呢，对他们是一个很强大的一个心理上的一个冲击，对他们呢是一个这个呃一个生活事件的呃这个打击。那么在这个冲击下，他们就会产生很多心理上的不适应。那么